This is a list of planets that appear in the Vorkosigan Saga, a series of science fiction novels and short stories by Lois McMaster Bajold. Asland Predominantly agricultural planet connected to the Hagen hub, which is its only route to the rest of the galaxy. Never seen firsthand in the saga. Athos A planet with an exclusively male population with is somewhat isolated and remote within the wormhole nexus. The homeworld of Dr. Ethan Urquhart in the novel Ethan of Athos. The population is maintained by obtaining ova from human ovarian cultures bought and brought by the founders, combining them with the father's semen, and incubating the resulting fetus in the ubiquitous uterine replicator, which appears throughout the stories. Naturally only male babies are born. The old cultures started to die out, and a new batch was bought long distance. The receipt of a fake shipment sends Ethan off-planet to find what happened to the proper shipment, and into the center of a plot involving Baryaran and Setagandan agents. Most of the men form permanent or semi-permanent relationships to help in raising children, whose birth must be approved by local committees. Some men variously become «confirmed bachelors» monks of a sort. The planet is named for the Mount Athos in Greece, which is home to monasteries where no women are allowed. Barrier A planet with a feudal, military culture. Homeworld of protagonist Miles Vorkosigan. It is an Earth-like planet with a 26.7-hour day, but its native vegetation is inedible, and sometimes dangerous, for humans and Earth-descended life, terraforming is necessary for settlement. Indeed, the settlers' dislike of the vegetation is shown in the choice of names, bloody puffweed and razorgrass being among them. It has two major continents, as well as islands in its oceans. Since there are areas of Arctic-like climate, as well as temperate zones with winter snow, it has to be assumed that there are also polar oceans and or land masses under ice caps. Geographical diversity is similar to the Earth, with flat plains, high mountains, swamps and river valleys. Size, population Barriar itself has a very small population relative to many other planets in the universe. The exact number is not mentioned in the novels, but there are known to be 60 districts, each with a count in charge, and some districts at least have populations measured in the millions. Thus a total planetary population of 60 to 120 million seems likely. In addition, Baryaran casualties during the Setagandan occupation are described as being about 5 million, which would be disastrous in a population of 50 million or less. Compare to Paraguay's losses during the Paraguayan War, compare this to Old Earth, with a population in the billions. The original settlement of Barriar comprised about 50,000 people. Languages Four languages are spoken in Barriar, English, French, Russian and Greek, all heavily dialectalized. Greek speakers are somewhat disparaged as «Greeky hicks» by the rest of the population, and they are reputed to be very conservative. Economy Barriar's planetary economy is mostly based upon agriculture, though the role of industry has grown since the Setagandan invasion. The Barriaran Empire draws most of its revenue from trade passing through the wormholes in Comaran space. Barriar's economy is weak by the standards of many other planets. The currency of the planet is the Barriaran Imperial Mark, which is worth about one quarter of a Betan dollar, regarded as the hardest currency in the Nexus. Government Barriar is the main planet of the Barriaran Empire, an empire with hereditary succession. Its governmental system is largely unwritten, and is largely based on oaths. It is led by an emperor, with supreme and absolute power. There is also a legislative body known as the Council of Counts, which largely controls the Barriaran Empire's finances and is somewhat parallel to the traditional British House of Lords. Each member of the 60-man Council of Counts controls a district, or a large-sized slice of the planet. For instance, Count Vorkosigan controls the Vorkosigan district. There is also a Council of Ministers which controls the executive functions of the government, and other formal and informal advisers to the Emperor. History 
Not much is known at this time about Bariaran history, but it appears that some time after the first colonists arrived, the wormhole that allowed them contact with the rest of the galaxy closed, isolating them on Bariar. During the time of isolation, wars were frequent, with the Vor fighting among themselves, until Emperor Dorka the just united Bariar under his rule. These centuries of warfare made Bariaran culture very militaristic, as did the invasion from Setaganda that occurred about 20 years after the end of the time of isolation. The occupation period continued for around 20 more years, costing about 5 million Bariaran lives. After the Setagandans were defeated, Bariar was determined not to allow this to happen again, and conquered Komar, the planet that controlled the only wormhole that allowed access to Bariar. The Komarans had accepted bribes from the Setagandans to allow their invasion fleets to pass through the wormhole. This gave Bariar a very militaristic reputation in the rest of the civilized galaxy, not unlike Prussia or pre-1945 Japan. Culture there are four major ethnic groups on Bariar, descended from Russian, French, English, and Greek forebears, presumably to be found among the original colonists. The Greeks are an explicit minority on Bariar, and it appears that Russian is the predominate culture, based on the number of Bariaran cultural aspects that mirror, or are derived from, Russian culture. An example would be the prevalence of Baba Yaga in Bariaran folklore. However, it appears that English serves as the predominant language, with the three others forming minority tongues. In the novel Brothers in Arms, Miles Vorkosigan is described as switching from his nasal Betan accent, which he affects in order to play the part of the mercenary Admiral Naismith, to the guttural Bariaran accent when he reports into the Bariaran Embassy in London, on Earth, indicating that the primary languages of Beta Colony and Bariar are the same. Bariaran writing is described in the novel Cordelia's Honor as consisting of curlicues, but is apparently Latin-based rather than Cyrillic-like Russian. In a civil campaign Miles shows Ekaterin Vorswason a saddle emblem combing the letters B and K around the letter V, symbolizing the union of the names Vorbara and Vorkosigan in the marriage of Miles' grandfather Pyotr to Olivia Vorbara. Bariaran culture is feudal, dominated by a military caste known as the Vor, headed by an emperor and sixty counts each governing a district. On Bariar the title of count is derived from accountant, since the original counts were tax gatherers, counts and their liege subjects have reciprocal duties and obligations to each other. Members of the Vor class have the syllable, Vor, prepended to the original surname. The original surnames were mostly Russian. The result is somewhat similar to the use of Von, for the Junker class in Prussia in the 19th century. The entire setup is not unlike early Meiji era Japan, particularly since Bariar was isolated from the rest of the known galaxy for many centuries, and devolved into a quasi medieval level of technology. Modernization is proceeding rapidly at the time of the Vorkosigan saga, but at the price of a great deal of culture shock. While the cities are modern, much of rural Bariar is still not too different from conditions in the Time of isolation. Bariarans have many customs inherited from the time of isolation, in which the society was agrarian and semi feudal. Bariaran counts take oaths of fealty from the residents of their districts and their personal bodyguards, known as armsmen. The oath of a resident is necessarily less formal and personal than that of an armsman, and may consist simply of signing a document. Thanks to enlightened legislation pushed through by Count Vorkosigan, residents can easily switch their oaths to another district, causing counts to compete with each other to improve the living conditions of residents. The oath of an armsman or other vassal is, necessarily, more formal and direct. It is taken in the same manner as was practiced in Europe during feudalism, with the hands placed between those of the individual administering the oath. The first-born son in a family inherits any titles and family wealth upon the death of his father, no matter how many older sisters he has. The eldest son is also the legal guardian of his brother's children in the event of the brother's death, a fact which complicates the life of Ekaterin Vorswason after the death of her husband Etienne on coma. Etienne had no living brothers, so the guardianship went to his cousin Vasily, the nearest male relative of the same generation. The eldest son is typically given the first name of the paternal grandfather and the first name of the maternal grandfather as a middle name. 
However, in the case of Miles Vorkosigan his paternal grandfather, Pyotr Pierre Vorkosigan, refused to permit this due to Miles Vorkosigan's extreme POV Baryaran culture deformity. The answer was to name Miles after his maternal grandfather Miles Naismith. The second son, however, also gains a name, this is the middle name of the maternal grandfather followed by the middle name of the paternal grandfather. Thus, the individual brought up as a clone of Miles and, thus, effectively Miles' identical twin brother would have a name. According to Miles, "...you do have a name. You are Mark Pierre Vorkosigan. Sorry about the Pierre. grandfather always hated it." Thus, it can be inferred that this innate grandfather's full name was Miles Mark Naismith. Baryarans will sacrifice an item in a small fire to memorialize a dead person. The item may be a lock of hair, a memento, or an item specially made. The most important time for this is at a funeral, where the eldest son is expected to light the fire for his father, but Baryarans may burn an offering for anyone at any time as an act of remembrance, or a personal catharsis. At a funeral, close friends and other family members will add their own items to the pyre. Miles Vorkosigan's sacrifices have included an illuminated copy of his graduation certificate from the military academy, for his dead grandfather, General Pyotr, a lock of his hair for a baby killed in the backcountry whose murder he investigated, and an offering to one of the victims of the Komaran massacre for which his father is blamed. He also burns offerings for, and talks to, Constantine Bathari, his childhood bodyguard and surrogate father. Some Baryaran families, especially the Old Vor, arrange marriages for their children using a go-between known as a barber. These are old women, and at the highest levels they are professionals who guard their reputations. Ekaterin Vorswasson's first marriage was arranged this way, although she had the right to refuse Etienne. After Etienne's death she is shocked and elated to receive a proposal which she at first imagines to come from Miles Vorkosigan. Traditionally after the death of her husband a woman would not entertain suitors for a year. She would signal this by wearing black. Apart from allowing her to recover from being widowed, this was designed to ensure that any child born after the husband's death would be clearly his and not that of any other man. Significant locations on Bariyar Vorbar Sultana, the capital of Bararaya, and the entire imperium. A good deal of the story takes place here. Each count maintains a residence in the city and this is also where the emperor generally resides. The emperor's official palace in the city of Vorbar Sultana. The building's architecture is very new in some parts, yet old in others. This is because as one emperor succeeded the previous, new rooms and wings were built. It features a main ballroom, stables, imperial quarters, a large courtyard-style garden, and a system of secret underground tunnels. The underground tunnels act as an escape route if the building comes under attack. Vorkosigan House is the official residence of the Vorkosigans when in the city. This is the default residence since the Vorkosigans spend much more time involved in imperial politics than in district politics. It is a large stone mansion, situated near the Vorbar Sultana University. Vorhartung Castle is where the Council of Counts meets, as the main legislative body on Bariyar. Imperial Securities otherwise known as IMPSEC headquarters are situated in the middle of Vorbar Sultana. The building was designed by a paranoid and maniacal architect under the employ of Mad Emperor Yuri. It is described throughout the series as a very ugly building, mostly made of a cement-like substance. However, its design, while ugly, is very effective, and very secure. It is described in the novel memory as having spaceship-grade air filtration systems and secure water and food supplies. IMPSEC is the branch of the Imperial military primarily concerned with the security of the Emperor and the Imperium. Mostly, IMPSEC consists of analysts and covert operatives. However, since IMPSEC is the Emperor's last resort, they can requisition whatever forces they need. The caravansary is near the center of the old part of Vorbar Sultana, and this area used to be a pit of poverty but during the timeline of the series has undergone some but not much renovation. Vorkosigan's district, the district that the Counts Vorkosigan administer, as all districts on Bariyar, is named after the family surname. There are a few cities and a great multitude of towns and villages in the district, which is largely agricultural and rural. 
A notable feature of the district is the Denderai mountain range, which was used as a bolt hole by Pyotr Vorkosigan and a company of soldiers against the invading Setagandans. During Vorderian's pretendership, Cordelia Naismith hid in the mountains with Gregor to evade capture and assassination. Miles named the Denderai Free Mercenary Fleet after the mountain range. Hasidar is the capital of Vorkosigan's district, and contains the administrative offices of the Count's government, as well as higher educational and medical facilities. It became district capital after Setagandans destroyed former capital Vorkosigan Vashnoi using nuclear bombs. The Count's official residence in the district is found there, but the Vorkosigans spend more time at Vorkosigan Serlo when in the district. Vorkosigan Serlo is a small village situated in the Vorkosigan district. The Vorkosigans maintain a summer home nearby, on the shore of the Long Lake. The Vorkosigan home was originally an outlying barracks for a castle dating from the time of isolation. That castle is now a burnt-out ruin on a headland overlooking the lake. Sylvie Vale is a remote Denderai mountain village, and the location of a significant event in Miles Vorkosigan's life, described in The Mountains of Morning, when he acted as his father's voice in an infanticide for mutation case just after his graduation from the Imperial Service Academy. Profoundly impacted by the experience and the people he met, he returns there from time to time to rest and recuperate. Kiri Island, an Arctic island used as a training base for the military, it is considered the worst posting in the entire empire. During the long winter night the permanent staff suffer from boredom relieved only by alcohol. In the summer when trainees arrive, the permanent staff scramble to keep the raw recruits alive in an environment consisting of sudden violent storms and tundra bogs that can swallow vehicles whole. Ensign Miles Vorkosigan was posted to the island as weather officer after his graduation from the military academy. This resulted in his arrest for mutiny and, since he is Vor, treason. Years later Lieutenant Alexei Vormonkrief was posted there as laundry officer, as punishment for his activities in Vorbar Sultana politics, specifically the attempt to smear Miles Vorkosigan for the death of Ekaterin Vorswason's husband. Topic. Beta colony One of the most scientifically advanced planets in the galaxy, despite its inhospitable desert climate. Also, one of the most liberally tolerant and open, as well as egalitarian. Homeworld of Cordelia Naismith Countess Vorkosigan, mother of Miles Vorkosigan. Beta colony was first created and introduced in Dreamweaver's Dilemma. Dagula IV Site of a Setagandan prisoner of war camp Earth Though Earth is highly advanced and heavily populated, it nevertheless does not play an important role in galactic affairs, due to being located in an unstrategic backwater of the wormhole nexus and lacking a unified planetary government. There are hints of catastrophic changes in its history, mutated animals and insects, and greatly elevated sea level, presumably due to global warming. Escobar A wealthy and advanced planet, Escobar is situated somewhere between Sergyar and Beta Colony. Various personal and place names suggest it was founded by a Latin culture. The Baryaran Empire attempted to invade Escobar in Shards of Honor, with disastrous results. It becomes a regular port of call for the Denderai fleet in subsequent books for repair and medical treatment. The Durona Research Group, co-owned by Lord Mark Vorkosigan, is based there. Ada <laughs> Seder IV Center of the Eight Planet Setagandan Empire, the culture is based on genetic engineering. Illyrica Famous shipbuilding planet, also the source of Simon Ilion's artificial memory biochip. Never seen firsthand in the saga. Jackson's Hole 
a planet with no government other than the predatory capitalistic houses, each led by the baron. Much of the population is in techno serfdom to one of the houses, or ekes out a miserable existence outside of house protection. Everything is done based on what you can pay for, and only the deal is sacred. The climate is cold and dry. World where Marc Pierre Vorkosigan was created. Topic: Kabu Dini, New Hope 2. The setting for the Vorkosigan book, Cryoburn. The inhabitants of this planet freeze their dead in the hopes of one day being able to revive them. Cryonics works reliably in the setting, causing a demographic imbalance impairing the planet's functions over time. Various personal names and honorifics suggest that the founding culture was Eurasian, and predominantly Japanese. A local Kabu Daini lad is one of the three viewpoint characters in the book. Koma Discovered centuries prior to the events of the Vorkosigan saga, Koma is undergoing a major terraforming project to make the outside air breathable. During this century's long program, the Komarans are confined to dome cities, with controlled air supplies. The outside air is presently far too rich in carbon dioxide. The planet is also very cold, somewhat similar to Mars. At the time of the Vorkosigan saga, the most complicated life form outside the domes is a genetically modified peat moss. There is also a large orbital mirror, which increases amount of sunlight actually hitting the planet. The terraforming program, and the orbital mirror, are major plot points in the book Komar. Komar has strategic importance because its local space contains the single known wormhole into Bariyar, the heart of the Bariyaran Empire. It is also a major trade nexus. Capital city, Solstice. Government Kamar is ruled by the Bariyaran Empire, but has its own dominant class of oligarchs. The planet is divided into 20 equal sized sectors, with responsibilities for regional government. Komar is governed by the Imperial Councilor, a position appointed by the Emperor that is equivalent in rank and responsibilities to the Viceroy of Sergyar. The plutocratic and nominal democracy is divided into two types of votes one person, one vote and extra votes that are granted to any settlers starting a new dome city. These extra votes are inheritable and trade able on a secondary market. The plutocratic oligarchies control the government by holding these extra votes. This system of extra votes becomes the basis of an attempted invasion by the Kabu Danii to wrest control of Komar away from the Bariyaran Imperium. Population Many large domed metropolis sized cities, but the total population is very small, not more than a few million. Economy as Komar controls at least six important wormhole routes to Bariyar, Sergyar, Escobar, Pol and Setaganda, as well as a few other minor jump points, much commerce passes through the system and is taxed. Komar's economy is dominated by the oligarch families, whose large fleets are sent on trade runs lasting five to, 12 months to many areas throughout the galaxy, often returning with very large profits. Bariyaran conquest and strategy Eighty years prior to the Vorkosigan saga, Bariyar was invaded by Setaganda. As the only entrance to Bariyar was through Komar, the Setagandan Empire bought Komaran cooperation. Setagandan forces occupied Bariyar for twenty years but were eventually driven out of Bariyaran space. After 30 years of recovery and technological regrowth, Bariyaran forces poured through the wormhole to invade Komar for three main reasons. One, the Bariyarans wanted to be able to control their own wormhole entrance so Komar could not again let enemy forces into Bariyaran space. Point two, the Bariyarans understood that Komaran trade would be very helpful in regaining revenue for the Bariyaran Imperium. Also, this would allow Bariyar to contend with other powerful galactic markets, such as that of Beta Colony, or the Hagen Hub. Point three, the Vor of Bariyar wanted revenge on Komar for allowing the powerful Setagandan invasion force through to Bariyar. The Bariyaran invasion was successful. Komar is currently controlled peacefully by Bariyar. A number of Komarans have reached high rank in the Imperial military, and Emperor Gregor has married Dr. Lisa Toskin, member of a Komaran oligarch family. 
Topic: The Solstice Massacre. After the invasion, 200 prominent citizens, including members of the oligarchy, were held captive by Baryarans in Solstice, the capital city of Komar, having been promised safety by Admiral Lord Aral Vorkosigan. In Vorkosigan's absence, the prisoners were all murdered on the orders of his political officer who had been assigned to Admiral Vorkosigan against his will. In retribution, and to regain his honor, Admiral Vorkosigan killed the political officer with his bare hands. As the suspected perpetrator of the massacre, Vorkosigan was afterward known as the Butcher of Coma. The Solstice Massacre inspired an upsurge in terrorist activity. One of the Comaran terrorist groups would eventually become responsible for the creation of Miles Vorkosigan's clone brother Mark. <inaudible> <inaudible> Empress Lhasa Lhasa is a member of the Comaran oligarchy who marries into the Baryaran Imperium and is the mother of Emperor Gregor's heirs. <inaudible> Soleta Array and Technical Rebellion Following the destruction of the Soleta Array, newly minted Lord Auditor Miles uncovers an attempted rebellion by a group of scientists, engineers who believe they have a way to shut off the wormhole between Komar and Barriar. <laughs> attempted governmental overthrow from Kabu Daini A faction of the Kabu Daini Cryocorp Whitecrees attempts to gain control of Komar using cryogenics to gradually acquire a majority of votes through cryogenics, the same methods that succeeded in giving the corporations control of the Kabu Daini government. The plot is uncovered by Miles Vorkosigan. <laughs> Kshatriya Seldom mentioned planet but their mercenaries and special forces are legendary for their discipline, the name appears to derive from that of the Hindu warrior caste. Leruba A planet near Tau Ceti and Earth, its head is the barber of Loruba. Languages spoken there include Leruban and Arabic. Mahata Solaris A planet not far from Earth, it is principally known for ordering the Denderai Free Mercenary Fleet to leave very abruptly after a failed Setagandan assassination attempt against Admiral Naismith. Marillac Occupied by the Setagandan Empire, eventually regained its independence, thanks in part to covet Baryaran aid. Never seen firsthand in the saga. Marillac goes through all three phases in the course of the series. Pre-invasion, a Marillac ambassador scoffs at the notion of a Setagandan invasion in one book. The next time we meet Marillac characters, they are POWs and their planet is under occupation. Finally, we learn of Marillac's liberation in the news. Topic. Mu Seta One of the eight planets of the Setagandan Empire, it connects to Vervain. Topic. Orient IV A heavily populated planet near Beta Colony and Rodeo. Its jump station, Orient Station, served as the Sector IV headquarters for Barrier. Topic. Pole Link from Komar to the Hagen Hub. Never seen firsthand in the saga. Topic. Rose Setter One of the eight planets of the Setagandan Empire, it connects to Komar. Topic. Rodeo A marginal world with a thin, poisonous atmosphere. It is not colonized, but it is heavily mined for petroleum. Sergya 
Sergyar is one of the three planets that comprise the Baryaran Empire in the Vorkosigan saga. The other planets are Baryar and Komar. The entire planet has been said to be the personal property of Baryaran Emperor Gregor Vorbara. It is the newest addition to the Baryaran Empire, and was a previously uninhabited planet with a link from Komar to Escobar. Only seen firsthand in Shards of Honor and Gentleman Joel and the Red Queen. It is nicknamed, Chaos Colony, after Baryaran settlement begins. <laughs> Discovery Sergyar was first discovered by Baryar shortly before the Escobar War. It is the site where Cordelia Naismith and Lord Admiral Aral Vorkosigan first met when her Betan astronomical survey ship landed a party to explore and catalogue the planet and its biome, unaware of Baryar's earlier territorial claims on the planet. <laughs> Strategic importance Sergyar is strategically important because it is a link from Komar to Escobar, and then Beta Colony. This opens up trade in the wormhole nexus significantly for Baryar. It was the site of massive caches of ordnance and other material for Baryar's abortive attempt to invade and conquer Escobar. <laughs> Native life Native life on Sergyar seems to have a general radial symmetry, with most life forms having six limbs or appendages. While there are no known native sentient life forms, there is a diverse ecology. Various species mentioned include large predators referred to as fuzzy crabs that hunt in packs, and their hexapetal herbivorous prey, large, six footed grazing animals. Smaller creatures, radial in design, seem to fill the ecological niches filled by insects on Earth. There are also mentions of airborne life forms, similar in appearance to jellyfish, that float through the atmosphere, supported by gas-filled sacs, that descend from above to leach blood from larger, moribund life forms. The gas is mostly hydrogen, and will explode if exposed to fire. In later books, there are mentions of a worm plague on Sergyar, its survivors have puckered, swirling scars on their skin. Name. According to the naming scheme of Baryar, the suffix ya likely means planet, world, or something similar. Thus, Sergyar was named for Crown Prince Serg, the one-time heir apparent to Emperor Ezar Vorbara and father of now Emperor Gregor Vorbara. Prince Serg died in the Escobar War. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Government. The seat of its government is Karinberg, a town which grew up around the fleet depot constructed in preparation for the Escobar invasion later there are plans to move the capital to Gridgrad, due to Karinberg's proximity to a volcano. In the later series, Count Aral and Countess Cordelia Vorkosigan govern Sergyar as Viceroy and Vicerain, with Cordelia continuing as Vicerain in her own right for a few years after Aral Vorkosigan's death from a brain aneurysm. A steady flow of immigrants from Baryar and Komar have made new homes on Sergyar, many of whom were former residents of the Vorkosigan district. <laughs> Sigma Seta One of the eight planets of the Setagandan Empire, it connects to Vega Station. Tau Seti V A heavily populated planet near Earth, Escobar, and Komar. They fought on Escobar's behalf during Baryar's invasion attempt. It is the origin of the Tau Setan beaded lizard. <laughs> Tau Verde IV Its system was the site of mild subversion of the Ozran mercenaries into the Dendari mercenaries. The planet itself was never seen firsthand. Topic. Vervain One of the planets lying off of the Hagen hub, briefly invaded by the Setagandan Empire. Topic. 
Topic: She Seta. One of the eight planets of the Setagandan Empire, it connects to Marillac. Topic: YLLA. A terrestrial planet with an Earth-like atmosphere and ecology, although the ocean waters and aquatic life are dangerous for humans. It is introduced at the end of Captain Vorpatrel's alliance as the place of temporary exile for Ivan Vorpatrel and his wife Tage Aqua after the events of the novel. The planet is sparsely populated with small industrial cities in temperate climates and tropical islands, one of which becomes the site of the Baryaran Consulate after Ivan takes over as senior military attaché and decides to relocate the consulate from a bleak industrial city to somewhere more to his liking. The name Ylla may refer to a character in the Martian Chronicles. <laughs> Zove Twilight. A planet near Marillac and Illyrica, it is cautious regarding the neighboring Setagandan Empire and officially neutral regarding them. Barriar has an embassy there. <laughs> <laughs> External links http colon slash slash pw1.netcom.com slash tilde fresne slash justmap.htm http colon slash slash pw one dot slash tilde fresne slash nexus htm <laughs>